judge the word because the word judges you. The word judges you fine if you respond to it properly. The word judges you and condemns you if you don't. So Jesus said there is no other recourse. You must be born again. So what happens, you know, for those who have not been born again, this message for you. The Lord prepares it for you. But let me tell you this. What happens when you become born again? Let me speak to those who now have accepted the Lord. What happens when a person becomes born again? The person, when he becomes born, born again, he receives the Spirit from God. You become the child of God. When you become born again, the day after you're born, when you wake up, it will be the same still you. You haven't grown your hair. You haven't lost your weight. You haven't grown any taller or shorter. You will still wake up in the same house. Wake up with the same wife. Same, praise the Lord. Same car, same job, same co-workers. You will still see the same, same people. You probably will have the same ache in your back or your knee or a headache. You will still see the same dog that you were trying to get rid of. Not, not Skippy. You know, and you will still see your same neighbor. It has not changed your perimeter, but it has changed you from within. And from within, what happens now is you have now a conversation with God. The person, the Bible calls the person within as the inner man. There is an inner man now in you, and this, actually, let me tell you this, this person sounds like you, and yet he's, he communicates with God straight up. No, there is no roaming charge. The bars are always full. And it's always, it's always there. He's communicating and worshiping God. Because the spirit comes from God. Now the problem with this is that you have what we call the soul, which is your mind. It's the same person sitting here, uh, you know, I'm talking to. It's the same person saying, man, I wore the, uh, the you know, I wore a tight shoe today. Oh, did I turn off that TV or... You know, that's the soul. The soul does not understand the thing spiritual. The soul just yields to anything where there is pressure and there is sense. But then now you have the Spirit of God who talks about God. And then the soul is saying, what is this that I'm hearing? What is this that I'm hearing? What is this that's going, going on? Now the Spirit that God placed in us, number one, let me tell you, is Holy. Is perfect, is righteous, and is redeemed. This is when God looks down, He sees a perfect person, which is the inner man. The imperfect on you is the soul. He remembers everything. Weren't you the one who used to smoke the pot? Weren't you the one who used to curse up to the wazoo? Weren't you the one with this bad attitude? But God is seeing the work of His Son, the redeemed, the redeemed soul, the redeemed spirit right there, and the soul now is struggling, and the body is just waiting for a decision. Let me, uh, let, let's look at uh, this scripture in uh, 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9 to 11. I don't have my clicker. Can you click that for me, please? All right, here we go. Let's read that. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither sexually immoral, nor the idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But you were washed, you were sanctified, and you were justified in the name of the Lord Christ, Jesus Christ, and by the Spirit of our Lord. Let me read that in another translation, the New Living Translation. Don't you realize that you who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? You who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God. Don't fool yourselves. Do not fool yourselves. Those who indulge in sexual sin or worship idols or commit adultery or a male prostitute or practice homosexuality or are thieves, or greedy people, or drunkards, or abusive, or cheat people. None of this will inherit the kingdom of God. Some of you were once like that, but you were cleansed. Praise God. You were what? Made holy. 
You were made right with God by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of God. He is saying, I want you to look at this and say, oh, I used to be that. Can you, can you find yourself there? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can find myself there. But the scripture is saying, you used to be that. Jesus, watch, Jesus said, unless you are born of water and spirit, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. What is water? Water is the cleansing. It is the word of God. When it cleanses you from your sin, it washes it away. I, I like what the Bible said. The, this is what the Bible said. He takes away your sin and buries it in the deepest sea. In another, in another, another uh, um, scripture, it says in there, He separates you from your sin as far as the east is from the west. When God looks at you, a drunkard, uh, an adulterer, uh, a fornicator, uh, revilers, swindlers. It's been a while since I heard the word swindler. Uh, those who do wrong. I, I do a lot of that. He said he took that away because of the work of Jesus. Because if you still have that, you cannot be holy. The Bible said he made you, he sanctified you, meaning he made you holy. He justified you, meaning he took away your sin. By the work of Jesus. If you still have that, you cannot be holy. I want you to turn to the person next to you and say, Yo, you're holy. <laughs> you are holy. You're sanctified. In fact, in, in, a, in another translation, there it says that you were made perfect. <laughs> and then the wife starts saying, I doubt that. The work of Jesus made us holy and sanctified us. Can we go one, one, uh, one, uh, one slide up, please? One more. No, up, up. Go back up. One more. All right. What happens when we become born again? These are three things that happens when we, when we become Christian, when we become born again. Number one is justified. We're gonna, I'm going to break this down so you'll remember what it is. Justified, sanctified, and redeemed. They, they sound expensive, but it's simple. Justified means I have no sin. Sanctified means I have been set aside, made holy. Number three, redeemed means I am owned by God. That's what it is. Cleansed, set apart, and owned by God. Cleansed, sanctified, and owned by God. Justified, no more sin. Cleansed, of, cleansed, cleansed from, of water, born of water. Sin has been washed away. The same, the same person, but a different spirit. In the spirit, the born-again person do not have any more sin. The, in, the, in the spirit that God played, let me tell you, that this is awesome. When you become born again, the spirit of God gave the spirit in you a new one. That spirit that has been placed by God in you cannot sin. Can you believe that? He, he, because he's born of God. He is born of God. The only thing he knew was to please God. The only thing that he knows is to please God and worship God and righteousness. He cannot sin. The, the person that sins in you is your soul, not your spirit. It is your soul because you, you, you have a history. If, if you became a Christian and you lived in this world for like 20 years and on your 21st year become a Christian, you have a 20-year history of sin, of iniquity. And if you become a Christian when you're 50, you, you, know, you have half a century of, of, of sin and iniquity. And if you, have had, if you had that pattern in your life, it's molded deep in you. It's hard to take it out. So God placed a new person in you to dictate, to start talking to the soul that has been bound in sin. And suddenly it becomes different now. The, before there is no, there is no struggle Against sin, you just go ahead and fall into sin. But now there is this holy part of you inside that's saying, Hey, we have a God that's holy. Let's try to be holy. And so now there's such a... Kaya nga, you, you notice this. They always tell me, Pastor, born again pa naman yan, bakit yan ganyan pa rin? Right? Pastor, this person accepted... I thought he is a Christian. How come he still behaves like that? The real person inside does not behave like that. It's the soul that's struggling because there's sin that has entangled him and he's, he's, making, he's, he's having a hard time making a decision. That's why when we go to the encounter, that thing's going to be going, going away. Have you noticed some people grow in their Christianity so fast 
And others like, it doesn't start with one gasolina. Tulak. And then they keep falling down. That doesn't make them an unbeliever. It's just that they have this past that keep catching up on them. And there's a problem about deciding whom to follow. But let me tell you, God loves them equally as he loves you. Amen. You know, that's why the Bible says we should help one another. We should encourage. And that's why you coming here is actually blessing you. It's actually blessing you. And this was the, imagine, Jesus told Nicodemus. And he's a, he's a Pharisee. He's like the most perfect. If, if God's going to save 70 people, Nicodemus is the man. And God said to Nicodemus, you're not going. Who else is going? I, I like the movie. You know, he came with this heavy, heavy, you know, getting busy same thing. When it's about time for him to be weighed, it was Jesus who was weighed. Every time, same thing with us. Same thing with us. I shared this dream. One, I, I shared this uh, uh, example before. There was this pastor who had a dream. In his dream, he died and he went to heaven. When he was in heaven, before the throne of God, suddenly the, Satan showed up. And then Satan started talking to God and saying, you cannot have this person in your kingdom because I know who he is. He does this and da, 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 da. And, and he was like, oh my God. Satan is accusing me before God and whatever he's saying is true. I did them all. And so it's just like in the court, he was standing there. He was so happy until he was, there was this prosecutor who started accusing him. And God was there. And then the, the God said, so how do you plead? You've just been accused by this. And he heard all these things, accusations from the devil, and they all true. He did them in his life. And God said, how do you plead? And then he said, he cannot look at God. Because he, this, you, you know, one thing you could do... You, do you know that you cannot lie before God? <laughs> you cannot say, time out. Can we go to a commercial? I want to I wanna huddle with my lawyer. What's going on here? Can I plead the fifth? You know, he, when God said, how do you plead? And he said, I plead the blood of Jesus. Amen. That devil went away. And then he woke up. It is the blood of Jesus that cleanses us away from sin. Amen. Amen. It's not our good things. It's not a good thing. That's why I was saying, look for yourself. Look, look over there. Which one is yours? Because as you keep reading down, it says that you were that, and now you're made holy. You're sanctified. You have been justified. So being justified is I have no more sin. I am forgiven. But the problem is your thought remembers, but God does not. He chose not to remember. That's what the Bible said. I will remember their sin no more. So whenever you come to God in confidence, you, you know, your mind will say, you just did this, you did this, you did this, and you have this weakness. The Bible is saying the Lord doesn't see that because what he sees is the righteousness of God, of Jesus in you. In fact, the Bible said, we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That means when he made us, you want to see the righteousness of God, look at the person next to you. This is the righteousness of God. He died for this person and that made Jesus righteous. And so we have no more sin. It's taken away from us. We're no longer, another thing about justification is we're no longer bound in sin. We can now say no. No one, you, before you cannot say no. It just comes and you are, you are, you know, you are a victim of, this, of, of, of sinfulness and iniquity. You just go ahead and follow sin. But being justified, you've been cleansed, you've been born in the spirit, and you are perfect in the sight of God. Clean. Next one is sanctified. What is sanctified? Sanctified is being separated. In the Old Testament, there are two kinds of people that are separated from the community. So the community lives in a city. It is walled. But there are two kinds of people that are separated. One of them, they cannot enter into the community. The other one can go into the community, yet the community cannot do what they're doing. The first one that's separated at the Old Testament are the lepers. Sa Tagalog, yung mga meketong. Yung ketongin. Leprosy. What happens to them is that when they start having a, a skin disease or infection, they have to go to the priest, and the priest will determine whether this is just an outbreak of your teenage acne, and you would hope it is, or it's leprosy. And if it's leprosy, they are deemed unclean. What happens is that the priest will, will, will pronounce and say, you know, you are unclean. 
out you go. You cannot come into the...